Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how I paint nature scenes in my art journal. I want to give you a couple of ideas how you can do this by exploring different mediums and I will also give you a couple of tips and tricks if you're just starting out. So for this video I will paint water lilies, sunflowers, an ocean scene and last but not least clouds. Before I'm going to start I want to show you something. I sell my own prints and postcards online in my Etsy shop, so if you are looking for a hand-painted card or you would like to give your friend or family member a unique gift, you are able to do so. I painted all of these cards in my art journal. You are able to see a flip through of that book. I already uploaded it on YouTube. I start by adding washi tape on the page because this will ensure that you will have nice white borders around your painting. I actually ran out of the black tape at the moment that I was recording this video, so I eventually used some yellow tape as well. It's especially important that the tape you are going to use will not ruin the paper. You will see later why you do not want that. Um, this book is a watercolor journal and it's from this brand that I cannot pronounce or I probably can but I'm not sure if I will do it right. So you will see the name of the brand on your screen now. There you go. For the first painting, I already started with the first layer. I use various shades of green and add some pink as well. One of the mistakes that I used to make when I was starting out was that I wanted to work with details already in the beginning of the painting process, which is not necessary at all. You just have to understand the base colors that you need for painting and you can always level that up later. It would be my advice to not worry about that in the beginning. Just follow your guts and do what you think is right. That advice probably works for everything in life, but yeah, just go with the flow, basically. I use gouache paint for this. If you haven't worked with this medium before, it's basically a mix of acrylics and watercolor in a way that is actually not transparent at all and it dries pretty quickly. You are able to add different layers on top of each other and once the paint has dried on your palette, you can easily re-wet it with water and you can reuse it, which is absolutely great. For the water lilies, I basically paint the heart that is on its side, if you know what I mean. I use a green shade for this. You can add shadows here as well, this will make it look more realistic. I did look at a reference picture for this water lily painting. This might give you some structure as well. You should also keep in mind that everything that you see up close with the bare eye should be more inside and it should have more details. For the flowers, I first use a shade that's in between burnt sienna and deep purple. You can also mix these colors if you have them. These flowers usually make the water lilies pop and you are able to make different variations. Let's continue. Now that I've showed you my water lily painting, I think it's time to move on to the sunflowers. Sunflowers always make my day a little bit brighter on a rainy day. They remind me of summer, that's why I probably prefer to paint them in my sketchbook all the time. Painting them does frustrate me sometimes because it can be quite complicated to get them right. You can see a phone case here that I have painted earlier. I currently use it as a reference. For the sky, I mix a blue and a white shade. For the ground, this is a dark green shade. Don't worry too much about having a neat transition, you can fix that later. I started with the sunflowers in the background. Since you're not able to see the flowers up close, I add yellow dots and work towards the front. The yellow that I use for this is often a mix of mustard yellow and lemon yellow. Again, you are able to add different layers with gouache paint. If you realize that you don't have the perfect shade of yellow the first time, it's easy to fix it later. That is once again why I love using gouache. I already paint a couple of leaves in the front as well. I would like to add a couple more details later, but first I'm going to let it dry. That means I can start working on the other part of my journal spread. Since this is going to be water, I use a light blue shade and carefully mix it with some white paint. 
Since water often has a lot of reflections, it often works better if the base color is quite light because in that case you can still add different shades and shadows on top of the first layer. Often the colors of the sky are reflected in the water as well. In this case, that means that you can bring the purple shade back in the water. Since that needed to dry, I already started with the last painting that I'm going to show you today. I mixed a couple of dark pink shades with a shade that's called Naples Yellow. It's quite a soft color. I blended the parts together with water and after that I let this painting dry as well. I currently add some shadows in the water. Once again, everything that you see up close should be more in front and it should be bigger. I made a pencil sketch because I want the ocean to have this small island with just one house, um, a lighthouse, trees and basically a lot of rocks. I'm not going to paint a lot of details here but at least you will recognize the structure of the painting soon. In this video, I am not going into detail about the various art supplies that I use, but I will mention that down below in the description of this video. If you would like a video where I talk more about the art supplies that I have and use most of the time, I am able to make a video about that as well. Just let me know if you are interested in that. I'm going to do something for now. It's time to paint clouds. I always love to do that because painting these fluffy creatures can be so whimsical and enchanting. Basically my technique is that I start with the lightest shade in the back and while I'm working to the front the shades will get darker and I basically repeat that step all the time. Clouds are sort of like mountains in a way that they never look quite the same so you cannot really make mistakes here. But if you want to be aware of the construction of the clouds beforehand, it helps to sketch the shape before you are going to paint. I use quite a thin brush for this. It's up to you what you want to use. It's all about experimenting and I am still learning as well. After that, it's time to add the last details. I was not entirely satisfied with my sunflowers yet, so I decided to give them another yellow layer. And now you can get excited for the best part. Or at least, I like to think that's what it is, is removing the washi tape. Often I write down the date that I finish my work and I like to add a quote or lyrics as well. But this is the finished work. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope to talk to you in the next video. Bye!